Hi everybody, thanks for watching. This is the Astrology Horoscope for the week of October 15th through the 21st of 2023. So this is the week in the middle of what we call the eclipse season. So it's a very, very powerful time. It's like a portal or, or just a time where society and the people around you they're in a fog. Uh, it's like smoke being sort of around them. And if you think about what an eclipse is, an eclipse is actually blocking in a solar eclipse the sun. So it's really blocking our consciousness, the way we we see things, only to reveal something. And then a lunar eclipse is sort of blocking that subconscious and then unblocking it. Hopefully, what happens is that we are allowed to see something that we didn't before. So it brings us something really important. There's nothing more faded in our life than an eclipse season. So you really, really have to pay attention to uh, this week. I would say the last two weeks of October primarily, big, big changes worldwide. A lot of celebrities you'll see in the news start to pass away in the month of October, and you see a lot of babies being born. So a lot of people leave the earth, and a lot of people um, come into this world during this special magical time. So when I was thinking about the week of October the 15th through the 21st, doing astrology so long, you start to see like that certain events are so powerful that they may bring everyone's attention to that. So for instance, Pluto going direct last week on October 10th is a major event where it has long lasting ramifications globally. And, and of course, in your life on a micro level that everything else is kind of secondary and you might not be able to see everything else. And then only four days later, October 14th, you had a solar eclipse, which in two weeks on October 28th, a lunar eclipse. Those types of astrology events for a solar eclipse last three months, lunar eclipse six months. So when you do astrology, you th after a while, you start to kind of ask people about their lives and what they've noticed. And it seems to be that a lot of people will, will notice the major events. And some of those minor events, those minor transits, they get sort of tucked away until somebody brings illumination and light to it. And that's where we're at here, the week of October 15th through 21st. There is two things. I think the transit on October the 16th is the hidden but very creative, very magical moment in time in this eclipse portal. So let me get my pen here and probably should use a, a magical color, but I won't. So on October the 16th, Jupiter is retrograde in the sign of Taurus at 12 degrees and 49 minutes. The reason why I say 49 is you'll see in a minute. So here we have Jupiter here in the sign of Taurus. It is making what we call a quintile to Saturn, also retrograde. Or you want to say Saturn's making the quintile of Jupiter. They are making a quintile. When this happens, it is a 72 degree aspect. And you might say, I don't know what that is. 72 is arguably the most important number. It is the degree and the angle of the golden triangle, which is made up and comprised of the golden mean. And it is the number that is the heartbeat of the entire universe. 72. Why? It takes 72 years for us to move one degree in the zodiac. Every 72 years, we move. 
So right now, as we speak, we're in the age of Pisces. Every 72 years, we move a degree, and we move a degree, and we move a degree, and eventually we'll get to the age of Aquarius, which is centuries from now, right? So 72 is what we call the procession number. Because every 72 years, we move a degree. It is huge. If we look at people like Leonardo da Vinci and the great minds of the past, they knew about the golden ratio. They know about the number here that they believed was anything beautiful in life was comprised of this ratio. Here we have it. The crazy thing is, is that when we think of the number 72 and the golden ratio, you can take the, the number of days that uh, we have for a given year, which is 365, and the number of days that the that Venus moves around the sun, and you get the golden ratio, right? We attribute the golden ratio, the golden mean, to the planet Venus because it personifies uh, beauty. And that is what we think of when we think of the golden ratio. So we think Venus, what does Venus rule? Well, it rules Taurus, right? Jupiter is in Taurus. Jupiter was the old ruler of Pisces. Venus is exalted in Pisces. We have it all here. Saturn retrograde in Pisces, Jupiter and Taurus. So what we're looking at here in the midst of this chaos time, in this eclipse season, we're looking at something very, 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 very creative and very, 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 very magical, but very, very, very secretive and hidden right here on October the 16th. This is an exact quintile. So I would have to think that if you've been struggling with any sort of creativity, if you've been struggling on imagination or being magical or connecting to inspiration, if you want to look for a day in this entire month, maybe this entire year, that will peak your creativity, look no further than October the 16th. Couldn't been more auspicious being in the month that Venus rules too. This is Venus, 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 Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. That's what this is here. Magic, magic is here. But if you don't hear about this, this might kind of come and go for a lot of people. They might miss it because of the solar eclipse on the 14th, the lunar eclipse on the 28th are so impactful. And the stress that can come along with that can blind everybody. Unless they make time on October the 16th to get quiet, to be alone, and to be by yourself. Maybe it will be 15 minutes. Maybe it'll be an entire hour. Maybe it's staring at the stars at night. Whatever you got to do to tap into this, all you have to do is to devote some amount of time on October the 16th and see this quintile bless you. You're not going to get a quintile that often that's going to have Taurus, Pisces, and Jupiter relating to it that will create this more Venusian, more quintile power. It's just not going to happen. I think Saturn and Pisces is not a bad thing. I don't like falls and detriments in astrology. What Saturn does in Pisces is, is it defines the Piscean power and energy and expression. Pisces is all about unconditional love and connecting to everything. That's where the creativity and imagination comes from, the collective unconscious. Saturn comes along not to do away with it. Saturn comes along and, and, and sort of defines it like let's do this specifically saturn's not a party pooper in in pisces okay when you have jupiter coming along that loves pisces roger great in the sign of taurus this is when people will want to travel away they'll want to go somewhere where they can connect with the cosmos where they can look at the stars they will want to go inside themselves on an adventure in a guided meditation, or they would want the spirit realm or their own soul to give them something. Whatever it is, I would go on a walk in nature. I would take an hour 
even 15 minutes of your day to get quiet and see what the magic is on this day. I wouldn't look past it. But quintiles are not something that a lot of people talk about in astrology because, again, major, major events are out there. And this is more of the right brain, more of the invisible, more of the creative um, energies and influences in astrology. It's not like getting a promotion. It's not like moving. It's not these very practical and very human and very earthly and mundane stuff. That's not October 16th. It's not that. It's not an, It's not like that. It's more spiritual. It's more imagination. It's more creativity. It's all of that, but it's very, very powerful. And it's very, like, temporary. So all you got to do is make some time out here. Some of you will want to listen to music, while others I'm, I'm going to really encourage a moment of peace and quiet, whether you got to go outside, go to nature, you can do it inside, indoors, but you got to make time out to allow the cosmos to bless you with this super creativity here this week. The next day, Juno going to the Virgo is a little bit less fun, but but just as important. So um, let me delete this. So October, we'll do red right here. Juno moving into sign of Virgo. Juno is all about committed partnerships, but it has a high and low expression. What we don't want when Juno goes into Virgo is this negative or lower expression of committed partnerships. A lot of you out there watching will have to make a choice around October 17th, some specifically on October 17th, whether or not you want to do business, whether you want to do a collaboration, whether you want to do a one-on-one -on -one contract or entertain a romantic relationship, a partnership, whatever it is. But it does not always mean it's going to end perfectly peaceful and profitable. Whether that's romance, whether that's an agreement, whether it's business, whatever that is, even a move situation, it doesn't mean that it's going to end well for you or in your highest good. It just means this is an opportunity. Virgo, the expression of Virgo is, I want to be the best version of myself so that I can become self-sufficient, but not at the point where I'm going to be too critical on myself and think that I have to be perfect. So some of you will have to entertain a new partnership, whether that's business or romance, that you got to make sure, does this partnership or relationship expect too much from me? Are they disillusioned about the reality of themselves, about what they can do, about what we should be able to do? Does it even matter? Some of these expectations do they really treat you like it's a relationship or is, or do they think they call it a partnership or a romance or a business opportunity? And are they treating you like an employee instead of a business partner? I guarantee if you've been ignoring this and you are, let's say, are in some sort of partnership business-wise with somebody or some entity and you you have been ignoring the fact that they're treating you like an employee. It will rear its ugly head here. And the universe is asking you, is this really what you want? How does this partnership make you a better version of yourself? Not just in business, but in happiness. These are the lessons of Juno and Virgo. Just because there is a partnership, whether that's business or romance, doesn't mean that that's the one you should keep. There are others out there. So if there is a romance and or, and or a business partnership that truly brings the best out of you, then it's a yes. And that is the high version, high expression of Juno Virgo. If it doesn't and it's one-sided, this is the low expression. And what's going to happen is stress, anxiety will start to go to an all-time high if you ignore it, if you stay with it. 
Trust me on this. This is what is here. Magical, magical week. Uh, surprising for me as an astrologer because I just know that, hey, you have a solar eclipse the 14th, a lunar eclipse the 28th. What possibly can be more powerful than those two things? Well, I don't know if I can say for everyone that this week will be eventful because like I said, a lot of people in your life will be caught up in the eclipses that they won't notice Jupiter quintile Saturn. They won't notice Juno and Virgo at all. They'll be all wrapped up in doors opening, doors closing for the eclipses, metaphys metaphorically and literally, that they won't be able to understand this week as much as you might be able to. But I look forward to this week. I really can't wait. And so there we have it. Okay, I hope all of you watching are chilling and being very patient during this eclipse window. There's a two-week window. We're right in the middle of this two-week window between the solar and lunar eclipse. My best advice is go slow, drink plenty of water, drive and travel very cautiously. Do not be aggressive. Cooler heads prevail and take time uh, for this magical October 16th event and bring your logical mind on October the 17th. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not checked out my October sign-by-sign -sign breakdown, do so. Thanks again. Bye now.